Today we have a crazy story of a parent assuming their kid's in a gang because they got a haircut. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, I will hate my dad forever. I don't even want to call this jerk a dad. Since I was 7 years old, he physically hurt me and shunned me if I made any mistakes or embarrassed him or his reputation. I have countless memories of him threatening me. At 11, I had a diary in which I wrote everything about school, including a boy I met who I really liked. I hid the boy's phone number in a little pouch and always put the diary in the pouch in my cupboard. My dad was looking through my things and discovered both of these items. When I found out, I was so terrified I ran into my uncle's room and hid in his closet, crying while I heard him yelling to hit me so hard when he found me. At 13, he completely restricted Instagram and Snapchat for me, even when I explained to him that I only wanted to contact my friends. He said he didn't give a crap about friends and told me to focus on my study and forget useless things such as friendships. I was never able to invite my friends to my house or go to theirs. In school, I always downloaded Instagram just so I could text my friends and always deleted it before I came home. One time, I forgot to delete it. And as he was going through each and everything on my iPad, the school's one, like he does every day, he saw Instagram. He shouted at me to come down, started coming closer, and ended up slapping me and throwing me hard on the treadmill. My mother just watched and was the enabler. He made me live in constant fear and switched so fast after hitting or screaming at me that I didn't have time to process what he really did to me. At 14, when the police got involved, he manipulated the police so much that he was the victim and got to leave the house due to unsafe circumstances. Even though he earned 400000 from his job as a specialist, he gave his children crumbs and told us we should be grateful that he pays the bills and for our expensive school fees. He never paid child support once he left and never contacted us once. He made a Facebook account and from there we've currently found out that he's in America with his friends and going on expensive trips and visiting luxury 5-star hotels. From the bank, we found out he spent $4,500 on groceries and a total of $11,000 for seven days at a hotel for himself. For us, he would get angry if we made him spend more than $50 on groceries. It makes me want to end him and cry because of how much stuff he's put us through. And now that he's gone, he's having the best time of his life, completely abandoning his four kids. When he was with us, he always told us how much we were a burden on him and how much he struggles with constantly buying the food and paying the bills. Not once did he care about how his kids felt and constantly invalidated my feelings. Also on top of the fact that he was the most controlling, gaslighting, and manipulative jerk to exist. He's now trying to involve us in a court case to divorce my mother and take all the assets. Also trying to kick us out of his house. He doesn't, and never did, give a crap about his family. I hope for OP's sake and their mom's sake that they have somebody to turn to for legal representation, whether it's trying to ask every family member possible if they can help chip in to pay some lawyer's fees, or if you could find a really good lawyer pro bono. Because this dude has crazy assets and they're trying to take everything? I think we all agree, we hope a judge just stomps this guy out. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy fueling your hatred for these entitled parents, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, I now can't close my room door. Before I start, you must know that my mom is desperate for a boyfriend. She has four children with three different fathers. You can imagine how she would be lonely. However, she gets too desperate. Every boyfriend she spoiled him with food and trips to theme parks and water parks we never went on before. Then later she would get mad at us if we say anything wrong to him or do anything bad around him. Most of them use her like to get food or get a green card through marriage and honestly I can't blame them for not wanting to be with a woman like her. Her newest boyfriend used to just be a handyman around the house. She would call if we broke something. He now has suddenly began to live with us. He was nice at first, but now I don't like him. He calls our mom over the smallest things. One time it was 9 o'clock. I was downstairs in the kitchen drinking water. He saw me and said nothing. Three minutes later, I got a call on the house phone. It's my mom. She's yelling at me, screaming as if I'd killed someone. Why am I downstairs around her boyfriend? She screamed over and over again. I say nothing and she keeps screaming at me and screaming at me. 
Another time, her boyfriend comes upstairs to my room. Without knocking, he opens the door and he asks me where his hair gel is. I say no. But before he leaves, I stupidly open my mouth and say next time he could he knock? He looks at me as if I'm crazy and he then says he's going to call my mom. I looked at him as if he was crazy and just took my dog, which was in my room, and I went downstairs. Suddenly, the house phone rang. I pick up the phone, and it's my mother. She tells me to put the phone on speaker. Screaming, she asked, why did I walk away from her boyfriend when he was talking to me? He comes downstairs to hear the chaos he caused, and she goes on about, how could I say that to a grown adult, that I've got no right to say that, it's not my house and I can't do whatever I want. She goes on screaming, telling me to apologize to him. I do. And she says again, and again, and again. Later, I'm doing my homework, and the boyfriend's sitting on the couch talking to my mom on the phone. She then says that, if that was him back in the day, he would get hurt and disciplined and her children weren't right, and she needs to reason better on how she needs to do this and that. Now whenever I go to bed, I can't close my room door. I deal with the sounds of TV and light that floods into my room. Boy, I can't wait until they inevitably break up. I'm just worried that as time goes on, if she continues to be desperate for companionship, she's going to settle harder and harder. I mean, she's already settling way too hard here. God forbid, what if the next one gets even worse? I certainly don't blame OP for wishing ill on their relationship, though. Our next story is, my entitled parents want to go to my wedding after they disowned me last year. I'll keep this brief. About 10 years ago, my family didn't respond well to me growing up. I'm talking arguments over my partner, career, and place of living. I almost got kicked out before graduation and was looking for homeless shelters at 20, instead of studying like every other young person my age. We go silent for three years and are at very low contact. We reconnect to moderate visits, and then due to issues with my siblings in the pandemic, a housing crisis, and medical problems, I get estranged from my sibling. My sibling had a surgery and got angry that I wouldn't get them groceries in person. I was so sick I was only using Instacart to keep myself safe. The rift with the sibling is the second time this has happened. My parents go nuclear and discuss disownment regularly. I tell them to knock it off or we won't speak. To my understanding, I'm legally and financially disowned. I got engaged last year to the partner my partners never liked. They want to gift money to control the ceremony and I tell them no. This starts another feud and they remind me I'm disowned. I go no contact. My parents occasionally reach out, desperately wanting to go to my wedding. They're not invited and we're too much on the rocks for me to entertain it. But also, why do they need to go if I'm disowned? I'm willing to bet they tried to play the disown tactic in a way to try to make you submit and come crawling back to them. Like, please, please don't disown me, I want you in my lives. Obviously that didn't work. They're definitely not going to take it back, but they definitely don't want to pass up on the wedding. This next story is, Entitled Dad and Entitled Mother get physical with us for refusing to let them cut in line at a theme park. Me, female 25 and my best friend, also female 25, who we'll call Anna, went to spend a fun day at a large theme park close to our home. It was on a particularly busy school holiday, the week of their Halloween special, so I'd never seen the place so packed. You could easily wait for an hour and 30 minutes for the main rides everyone wanted to do. All day long, we've seen dozens of people cut in these ginormous lines, with lousy excuses such as trying to reunite with an imaginary relative who's conveniently all the way up the line. Where I'm from, it is an uncommon behavior, and even though people disapprove, they're unlikely to make a scene. However, on this day it happened way more often than usual. We even saw two youth group coordinators who did it with their 20 kids. By the end of the day, we were ready to lose our crap on the next person who would try to do that in front of us. Nevertheless, we were having a great time, catching up and drinking hot pumpkin soup while we waited in line. Then we see a woman who's passing everyone behind us. I exchange a look with Anna and we immediately position ourselves to subtly block the way. The entitled mother comes up to me and tells me she's here with her family, but they're already further in line. And would I please let her pass, blah blah blah. Her teenage daughter is standing behind her. I say no and she looks absolutely gobsmacked. Then I notice Anna is having the same conversation with a man, entitled Dad. I didn't notice before, who is holding the hand of a little boy about 7 years old. 
So we assume they're all together and conjointly tell them that they're pushing it too far by trying to cut the line as a group of four. Entitled Mother then laughs faintly and tells me that they're not together, pretty certain that it'll help her case. It becomes apparent that there are two different groups, but it's the last straw for us. Two different entitled jerks. At the same time, I am ripe to make a scene. Anna and I tell Entitled Mother and Entitled Dad they can wait in line like the rest of us, and if the rest of their families are really further in line, their relatives can wait for them. Entitled Dad is not having it and gives everyone the shoulder to pass with his small kid in tow. We don't really try to block him as he's very violent pushing people around and everyone's afraid to hurt the little boy who's being dragged by his father and barely protecting his face with his arm, though we're still blocking Entitled Mother and her teenage daughter. She then starts to try to negotiate with me, but how could I deny a loving family their last ride together? But it's the holidays, shouldn't we be nice to each other on a day like this? But she asked nicely, so how could I say no? She's on to me non-stop for 20 minutes with her guilt trip. I keep telling her no. I explain that she's not the first one to do that today, that we're on holidays too and want to get on with the ride as much as anyone in that line. I tell her again her relatives could wait for her if riding together is so important. At some point, I just repeat no over and over again, then I just stop answering her. I ignore her, drinking sips of my pumpkin soup while she keeps talking to the wind for 15 more minutes. I exchange a few looks with Anna while we both try to contain our laughter in this absurd situation. My friend was listening in on the interaction, but she didn't intervene much. I knew she agreed though, and she isn't shy. She just thought I was doing fine telling Entitled Mother off on my own. But Entitled Mother doesn't know her, so she assumes her silence means she might still have an ally. She turns to my friend and says, but you should discuss it with each other, don't you think, before giving me an answer? I reply that I gave her an answer already, as I repeated no multiple times. But she insists that I never said no, and for Anna to share her thoughts. So I ask my friend with a smile, do you think we should let the lady pass? And she replies loud and clear, no, with a chuckle. Entitled Mother now looks on the verge of tears. She calls us witches as she thinks we're obviously enjoying tormenting her. Anna replies, it's a good thing we fit the Halloween theme so well then. Entitled Mother then tries to push us aside, but we're not moving. We certainly didn't plan on going full force to block her, but she didn't know that. Someone else might have smacked her in the mouth right there. She pushes harder in a proper fury. We let her pass when she shoves us more violently aside, surprised by the confidence such a frail woman has that no one would dare lay hands on her even after she assaulted them. But then she's confronted with the family that was right in front of us. Obviously everyone's been watching the scene attentively, and people won't let her pass after the bit she did. So she starts negotiating all over again, playing the victim like she was a martyr of God. Her daughter's just standing there on her phone, trying not to make eye contact with anyone the whole time. Entitled Mother's talking to the other group, telling them how mean we were to her and that we were obviously conspiring to mess with her with the knowing looks and grins we exchanged between us. I say we exchanged those looks only because she was being ridiculously entitled and it became laughable at some point. Then I tell her I had a mom just like her who would have such tantrums in public and when I was a teen I could have died from embarrassment, and that her daughter looks very embarrassed by the way. In the end, she stops by someone slightly up the line, who makes it clear she would be smacked if she tries to shove them aside, but she did successfully move in front of about six people after us, so it was well worth it for her. I hope we ruined her day. The ride was very fun, and we just had time for another before the end of the day. That's where we met Entitled Mother 2 who would challenge us to a fist fight at the ride exit for not letting her family cut in line, but that'll be in part 2. I don't know about how far up the dad got, but all of this like trying to shove past people and trying to plead to people to move up in line. How long did that take? Did they really, like, make any progress? I hope they go home grumpy, upset, flustered, and realize they wasted all that time and effort trying to cheat people, and they really didn't get much to gain from it. Our next story is, did my 24-year-old female, mother, 63-year-old female, try to trap me into a Thanksgiving dinner? 
Long story short, there's drama between my mom and I. I found out that she took $160,000 of inheritance that was meant for me. She would also try to guilt me into giving her money whenever she knew I had some source of income, whether it was my minimum wage job as a full-time student with no car, this doesn't apply to me currently but it did in the past, or unemployment or whatever, even though she got over $650,000. After months of arguing, she finally agreed on a payment plan to pay me back. She initially gave me $50,000. Like a week later, she asked she could borrow $20,000 for a month. Mind you, I know she's made six figures from her job the past three years. I tried not to give it, but she guilted and pressured me into going with her to the bank to withdraw $20,000. I gave it to her October 3rd. A couple weeks later, she then asked if I'll be okay with the money I have left. And I said, yeah, plus that I'm getting 15000 in grants from school, stupidly. She then starts passive-aggressively asking for $15,000. So yesterday, I asked her for 2000 of my 20000 back. She starts crying hysterically, saying, I knew I shouldn't have trusted you with money. What are you doing, drugs? You don't pay the bills. You don't have any utilities. You just want the money because you don't have a career yet and you're behind. You've changed. I don't know who you've become. You scare me. Why are you so mean? I tried to be your friend. You're so abnormal. I don't know why you're like this. You ruined my holiday. You've ruined my life. If you want the 2000 then give me your keys and get out and I'll give you your money as I can. She hangs up on me. This morning, she texts me saying, Your license plate came. Bring the car in the garage and I can install it. What the freak? The last time we talked, you were having an unwarranted tantrum, crying hysterically and threatening to kick me out. Anyways, I had no idea how to reply to that text, and I only saw it right as I had to leave the house, so I didn't reply. I leave and go for a hike. I knew people were coming over for Thanksgiving, but I was going to try to leave before 6pm. I come back from my hike around 3.45. Some guests were already here. And when I came in, she was obviously acting nice and sweet to me like nothing's wrong. What the freak? She literally didn't tell me anything about the dinner or whether I was even welcome or not. I literally haven't left my room in six hours. I'm tired of people pretending like nothing's wrong as a way to solve conflicts. If you want to leave the conflict for later, at least have the decency to tell me, can you please be ready by 3.30? People will be here. Please just act like everything's fine for a couple of hours for me. But no, nothing. What did she expect, especially after her insane, unwarranted tantrum? Honestly, I think OP needs to take this a little bit more seriously than they have been. This is a big amount of money they're talking. And if OP legitimately has entitlement to that $160,000 and they're not giving like any of it, I think OP needs to lawyer up and stop playing around here. Don't even worry about the Thanksgiving dinner thing. Focus on the six figures she stole from you. Our next story is nasty fight with my parents as a grown-up adult. Three weeks ago, I, 40-year-old male, had a nasty fight with my mother, 65-year-old female, and father, 68-year-old male, at their house. I normally suffer from anxiety, which results in occasional episodes of depression, and the greatest anxiety and, consequently, depression is caused by work. Before the fight, I complained to my parents about work, and I don't even remember how, a fight broke out. I know I'm already boring everyone with my complaints about work, but I just can't find any other way to get rid of my frustrations. Basically, there was an argument during which my mother annoyed me badly, so I answered her unpleasant comments rudely, and at one point she cursed at me. I also cursed her back after that. After that, she cursed me even more fiercely, to which I responded with equal ferocity. At that time, my father jumped out of his chair, visibly annoyed, and yelled at me to stop talking to my mother like that. That made me even more angry because I wasn't the first to start cursing, but I was just responding to my mother's curses. So I told my father that I would definitely respond to her every time she cursed at me, and that I had the right to do so. At that, he yelled at me to get lost out of their house. To that, I replied that I wouldn't leave the house just to annoy him. He furiously walked towards me as if he was going to physically attack me. At that, my mother jumped out of the chair and physically stopped my father who was moving furiously in my direction. 
After that, my father continued to verbally attack me and shout, shame on you, and even my sister joined in and started yelling at me. Otherwise, in every fight I had with my parents, my sister is always on their side and always attacks me together with my parents. In the end, completely enraged, I cursed them all together once more and left the house. It should be noted that I argue with my parents relatively often, especially with my mother. Our views on life are completely different, and my parents believe they're always right. It's important to say that during primary school, my mother often physically punished me, that is, beat me because of bad school grades. And that was because, out of fear, I hid my bad grades. So when my mother found out about them, I would get beaten because I hid my grades. My father rarely physically punished me. If he did, he would smack me on the face very hard. But he often yelled at me because of my primary school grades together with my mother. On one occasion, when I was about six years old, I was being rude to him or something like that. As I was a mouthy kid, I must admit that. So he lost the nerves and slapped me on my face very hard. So hard that the part of skin under my eye was swollen. Otherwise, I live in my apartment with my wife and two children. I haven't seen my parents since that fight, and my mother sent me a WhatsApp message two days ago in which she wrote that during the fight, she said all kinds of things to me, but also that I, as her son, told her all kinds of things and that if I wanted it to all together be forgotten, that I come to their place for lunch on Sunday. I said I won't come. My wife and our children intended to go to my parents for lunch on Sunday because she believes that our children have the right to see their grandfather and grandmother, which I think is fine. I wrote to my mother via WhatsApp messages that I was extremely angry with my father for intending to physically attack me. And I wrote to her that if my father had indeed attacked me at that moment, that I would have informed the police about it. She began to defend him and wrote that my father did it in an effect and that people in an effect do various things that they later regret. In my opinion, there is no justification for my father intending to physically attack me. I'm extremely angry with him, and I hate the thought of having to talk to him about anything, let alone pretending that nothing happened between us. Yesterday, my father called me on my cell phone, but I didn't answer that call. I don't know what to do. If I don't go to that lunch with my parents on Sunday, I'll be the only one in my family who refuses to talk to them, while my wife and my children will continue to go to lunch with them on weekends as normal. I don't know what my father wanted to say when he answered my phone call, but I have to admit that I don't care at all. It's interesting that yesterday, my sister sent me a message via WhatsApp in which she wrote, Are you angry with me? And if you are angry, I wonder why. I didn't reply to that message because I think that if she herself doesn't understand why I'm angry with her, then we have nothing to talk about. What do you think? Should I reconcile with my parents and my sister and pretend like nothing happened? I personally think OP's in the right with how they're handling this to date. These people seriously mistreated OP and you could use a lot more serious verbiage there and you don't give them a pass for that. You know, at least, at the very least, they can apologize. Unless they're putting an effort to actually seem like remorseful and trying to move beyond that, I don't think you need to concede anything to people who treated you the way they did, whether they're your parents or not. Our next story is mother thinking she's entitled and trying to guilt me, female, 19, into having kids and finding a wealthy husband. So I, 19, and my mother, early 30s, do not see eye to eye very clearly in the rules of the world at all. She believes in the marriage, love, live, life, and babies, whereas I'm an individual. I'm working for myself and my current partner. I do not want children, nor do I ever think I will. Marriage isn't off the table, but eh. She's a lower income mother who has one child, me, who she had very young whilst she lived with my gran. I'm a no child, more well off individual who moved out of her house because she's very manipulative. This brings me to two issues. Issue one, children. I hate children. I could not think of having anything worse than a slimy, horrible thing the size of a watermelon come out of my hoo-ha and ruining my body and life forever. Little crotch goblins make me feel sick. I'm bad enough with my cousins, even them touching my arm makes me feel like I have to have four showers to get the germs off. I have either intense germophobia or OCD. I've thought about having my tubes tied because the thought of having children brings me so much trauma. I don't look at children with lovey eyes, I look at children with disgust. 
Nothing personal, I just hate crotch goblins. She continuously asks me when I think about having kids, talking so highly of having kids, how I'll be alone if I don't have kids, how my gran will be sad if I don't have kids, and the family will be disappointed. She berates me for spending so much time on my work and my hobbies, gaming and online work, and having a year-long, almost two, long-distance relationship. Issue 2. My existing relationship. She has no respect for my existing relationship. She always points out good-looking boys and wealthy boys, and it makes me sick. It really makes me seethe. I don't understand why she cannot fathom I'm actually happy with my decision. She may not think it's real. She may not think he's wealthy enough. I don't care. I cannot fathom or understand why she feels so entitled to do it. Using my gran and trying to manipulate me and feel bad to try to get me to have children. Also belittling my relationship and trying to suggest wealthier men? It makes me sick. I think honestly this is a situation where she's trying to live vicariously through you. I think she's looking at your life thinking about her in that situation and cannot fathom that you're okay and happy with those and is trying to steer you in the direction of what they would do, which I'm sure most people would know makes no sense and is unwarranted. Our next story is, mom accuses me of being in a gang because of a haircut. Context, this is my mother and I, already had experiences of her being entitled and it nearly led to my parents' divorce, but that's a story for another time. So, my hair was growing long, so I decided to get a haircut. This guy that goes to the same high school as me was a barber and had an Instagram account for all the cuts he's done and he was good. He didn't charge much either, and I was tired of getting messed up by other barbers, so I hit the guy up and scheduled an appointment. I got there and got a low taper with the design on the back. The design was just a simple zigzag with a cross on the back. This will be important later. I'm very happy with my new hairstyle. I pay him the money and continue on with my day. I get home a few hours later and show my mother my haircut. She sees the design on the back and just freaks out from that point. She starts yelling at me about how I look like a gang member and now thinks I am one over a stupid haircut. She then starts making up other BS and excuses to make me cut it, like how it looked terrible and my school wouldn't allow this, etc. But everyone I showed the haircut to said it was great. I tried to calm her down and apologize that the design offended her and that I'm not a gangbanger, but she wasn't buying it. My family's also Catholic as well, and I chose the design because it has a cross on it, and I don't recall Jesus being part of a gang. I get so pissed off that me and her can never get along because, like I said in this context, this isn't the first time she's been entitled like this. So I just stopped arguing with her and went upstairs to do homework. But she follows me upstairs and still continues to yell at me for 30 minutes or so about how I must cut the design off. I'm so tired at this point, so I finally concur. She makes my father drive me to another barber, and it was the barber that I used to go to that would screw me up and had to shave a lot of the back of my head for it to go away. I guess having a cross design on the back of your head makes you a gang member, I guess. Definitely seems like some pearl clutching to me. One of those situations where they just don't really understand it, so they just assume it's some kind of like symbolism. Maybe OP got too into the wrong crowd and they left their mark on the back of OP's head. You know, like the renowned gang symbol, the cross. That said, our final story of the day is, Entitled Mother gets family to side with her on giving her daughter my son's Christmas present. So for context, my niece is three on Friday and is having a party on Saturday. My sister-in-law has been planning her birthdays every year. Sister-in-law also buys niece expensive things that never gets played with or worn. When niece turned one, she went all out on a photographer and smash cake. My niece was pretty miserable and kept crying the whole time, which in my opinion is very over the top, but that's my opinion. She complained that my father-in-law went to a family funeral. His niece was like a daughter to him and not his granddaughter's first birthday, even though he has agoraphobia. We always get a gift for her, but this year I had my hands full. Although whatever I give my niece, she never wears with or plays with. I have a son that's a year and a half and a daughter that's 12 weeks old. I was also in a mother and baby unit for two weeks recently for my mental health, so getting her a gift has gone on the back burner. Also with me not working, my husband's paycheck covers essential items. 
and sometimes going clothes shopping for our kids, which is rare in itself. Today, my sister-in-law messaged me asking if we were going to niece's birthday party. I told her no, as my two kids and husband have COVID, which I told her about Monday. She said she understood about them having COVID. She then messaged me saying niece's gift is awesome and she's excited about it. I asked her what gift because I genuinely didn't have anything for my niece. She was talking about the interactive table that's for my son for Christmas. I told her that's for my son which my mother bought for him from Costco, which I paid my mom back for. She told my in-laws which have told me to give it to my niece because Christmas is far away. She told my in-laws which have told me to give it to my niece because Christmas isn't far away and I can just get another one and to stop causing drama within the family which I refuse to do. Definitely don't cave in to these awful entitled family members. And don't let them gaslight you into saying that you're the one causing drama. You've got enough going on. If they keep harassing you like that, you get them to stop causing the drama by straight up not taking their calls anymore. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.